Hello sewing people of the internet. This video is not the video I set out to make. I was going to do sort of a pseudo tutorial at least showing the construction of this backpack and it ended up being such a disaster that I can't in good conscience try to show you how to make it because I, I really had to figure out a lot of stuff as I went and this is not exactly the backpack I was trying to make. So what I am going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of the pack that I did make I'm going to show you some of the construction process and, and maybe more importantly uh, the number of mistakes I made and repairs I had to do in the process and why some of those mistakes got made. Spoiler, because I was rushing. Uh, and then uh, after that we'll go through the details of the bag and I'll show you some of the things that turn out really great and I'm really happy with and a lot of the things that I'm very unhappy with that you probably wouldn't notice if you just happen to see me walking down the street wearing this thing but they're bad enough that I'm gonna probably retire this bag and make another one at some point uh, I don't know I might still use it some but we'll see so anyway first let's just take a look at kind of an overview of the design of the bag and how I executed it I conceived this backpack as a one bag travel backpack primarily for air travel uh, I made it for a particular trip that I just got back from, but the idea was always that I would use it for future trips. I wanted something big enough for several days, maybe up to a week if I packed appropriately, but small enough to be used as a carry-on item, obviously. And I had some particular design ideas for this bag that I didn't get to fully flesh out you know, on this particular trip, but... I got a pretty good idea that they would work out, so on version 2.0, I will probably pursue those ideas. Essentially, this is a zip-open clamshell pack, so it has a zipper that goes all the way down to here, and it opens clamshell. You'll see that in a little bit. Standard backpack, back panel. Uh, it doesn't have any, like, hideaway backpack straps or anything like that. The front panel is the part that's most different from anything I've made and I don't know if I've seen, I'm sure there's plenty of packs out here like this. I, I don't know that I noticed anything that was exactly like this, but uh, the front has this flap opening, it's basically like a messenger bag opening and it's just a, uh, a big empty pocket. There is one zipper pocket, I'll show you that later. The idea was that I was going to make a sling bag or a fanny pack type of bag that would fit in this when it's closed, so it would be, you know, about that tall. And that would act as the organization and a standalone pouch. So when I got to my destination, if I wanted to bring small items with me, I could just carry that. I didn't have time to finish or even really start making that sling bag. So what I ended up doing was using the compression straps on this bag to compress it down to a more manageable size. So when we, we went to Denver and we did a walking tour uh, while we were there, so I needed to bring like a sweatshirt with me and carry water bottles for my wife and myself, uh, little things like that. So I just used this pack for that. It's a bit big, even, even compressed. It was a bit big for the few things that I had on me, but it was fine it worked really well so but anyway so that was the kind of plan for this front pocket the idea is that i would have my e-reader phone gum whatever kind of you know item comfort items i wanted on the airplane in that sling bag and then before boarding pop this open take out the sling bag and when i got to the plane i could throw this in the overhead compartment and i'd have all the stuff i needed i ended up using i don't have it with me but i ended up using the fanny pack i made quite a few videos ago for that purpose. It wasn't big enough to hold the e-reader or a book or anything, but at least for the things, you know, like a pack of gum and um, light snacks and stuff like that. It worked great for that. So, so the concept was, you know, proven. I just don't have the bag yet to complement this one. In terms of function, I could not be happier with how this worked. This is the most comfortable backpack I've ever made and maybe the most comfortable backpack I've ever worn. The pack itself ended up weighing 3.8 pounds. I forget, I didn't write it down, but I think when it was fully loaded, it was like 25, 26 pounds. And that was uh, for a five day, four night trip with some extra clothing. I, I was there for a wedding and needed some options for what I was gonna wear for the wedding and things like that. So 
Um, so pretty heavily packed for a relatively short trip, and it was super comfortable. Uh, this is the first time I've used load lifters, and again, we'll, we'll go over the details stuff later, but um, it's the first time I've put load lifters into a pack that I've made. I don't know anything about load lifters, um, couldn't find any detailed information about how one makes them to make them work. I just made what I've seen in other packs. And lo and behold, it works great. Um, maybe a waist strap would have been helpful if I was going to be wearing this for longer distances, you know, you know, having to walk longer distances than I did uh, with it fully loaded. Uh, and I just completely uh, either forgot or didn't have time, however you want to look at it, uh, to put attachment points for a removable waist straps. It's funny, I've done that on most of the packs I've done but I just didn't have time on this one. But even without a waist belt and even fully loaded, it was super comfortable to carry. No issues at all walking around the airports with it. Uh, I often didn't take it off even when I had the opportunities to because it was just comfortable to have it on. So another thing I really liked is I was able to reach the water bottle pocket and remove and replace my Nalgene. Uh, one of the things I like to do is carry an Algene bottle with me when I'm traveling. I have it with me all the time anyway, but when I'm traveling, I bring it to the airport empty or empty it before I go through security. And then most airports have a bottle fill station at all the water fountains and stuff. So I just immediately fill it and carry it with me. And uh, I was able to do that without having to take the pack off. So that was really nice. I do have to kind of adjust the, you know, loosen the shoulder strap to be able to reach it. It's a little bit of effort to get it in and out, but it does work. So that was pretty cool. I, I didn't plan that, but I'm happy that it worked out that way. Anyway, before I get bogged down in the details, let me show you some of the design and construction process that I went through for this bag and the many, many problems that I had. This is definitely the most frustrating project I've ever done, but I'm happy with how it turned out to the extent that it at least is a proof of concept for me to try to make another one that's perfect because this one's far from perfect. Anyway, I'll show you the process and then uh, we'll go through some details after that. And by the way, this is going to be a very long video, so I'll put chapter markers in the description if you want to skip around to the parts you're interested in uh, and you don't want to watch the whole thing. Totally cool. Like, this is, this is going to be a lot of rambling, uh, incoherent nonsense, but you might find some useful information buried somewhere in there. So I've already started this project. I've really had to do a lot of thinking and that usually involves making stuff wrong and then undoing it and remaking it. So I don't have footage of a lot of that stuff, but I'm at a good position to kind of show you where this project is headed and how I got here. So basically I started off with this fabric. This is 600D Airwave. This was a custom print that I had made by Ripstop by the Roll. It's been up on a wall in my shop and the previous shop for a while now. If you've been watching for a while, you've seen it. Um, so I'm finally getting around to cutting that up and making something out of it. So that piece of fabric didn't yield enough to make this entire project. And I wanted to kind of break it up some anyway. So I'm also using some 1680 denier ballistic nylon. I just have a bunch of that. The interior is going to be this orange vinyl. I got this from Rocky Woods a long time ago. I've had it in my stash for a couple of years now, just waiting for an opportunity to use it. So now I'm gonna use it. This bag is not gonna be waterproof. I'm sewing this and putting holes in it. I'm not gonna do any seam sealing on it. Uh, it's not intended to be a waterproof bag, but this vinyl is very durable and the fabric itself is, if, if not technically waterproof, highly water resistant. So in the context of a travel bag that I'm going to be taking on airplanes and to hotels and in cars and stuff, you know, if I walk through a rain shower, it should be more than adequate uh, between the exterior fabrics and this fabric. It should be plenty water resistant for that kind of application. Uh, but people see this kind of material and think, oh, it's waterproof. Well, it's not when you poke holes in it. So just to be clear, I'm not making a waterproof bag. Uh, I do want to experiment with this material though, so that's why I'm using it. So the basic plan of this bag is going to be a zip open clamshell backpack. Pretty simple bag itself. 
Uh, what I'm doing differently on this is the front pocket is going to be uh, just a large front pocket and it's going to be a flap closure kind of like a messenger bag and it has this extension collar that will fold over when you close that pocket so it should provide good weather resistance and uh, prevent things from falling out of it. <clears throat> I've already sewn the liner to the front of that pocket. Uh, it's just going to have this one mesh pocket just for small items so that they stay up at the top and don't end up being hard to reach down at the bottom. I'm not putting any kind of organization into this pocket other than this. And the reason for that is I'm going to make a sling bag, fanny pack, hip pack, whatever you want to call it, that will live in that pocket and then the idea is I can have it all contained in one unit and then when I get ready to board an airplane I can take out the, the sling pack, have that on my person, put this bag in overhead storage or kick it under seat or whatever and you know not have to get into this bag anymore while I'm traveling. I don't know that this bag is going to get used as an everyday carry bag afterwards uh, but if it does, I'm planning on incorporating into the sling pack organization for my everyday carry items like a multi-tool, flashlight, pens, that kind of thing, so that when I'm not traveling, it can serve as the organization inside the pack. Uh, maybe not quite as easy as just like unzipping a pocket and reaching in and grabbing something, but at least things will be in a place that I can access them. To be honest with you, I don't normally have to get things out of my bag on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just stuff I like to have in case I need it, so if it takes an extra step to get it out, I'm not worried about it. But anyway, so the way this is going to work, this is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to try to explain it here. This is the inside of the front panel. If you're new around here, the part of a backpack that you would see if I were wearing it facing you is the front. The part that's against your back is the back. So this is the inside of the front panel and the front panel is made up of a piece of 600D airwave with the print on it and I just made a filler panel out of some 1000D Cordura that I had laying around. There's no sense in having a pattern here because this is going to be buried underneath the rest of it. And then the pocket that's going to go on the front is quite a bit longer than the front panel of the bag. And that's just sewn on to that piece of Cordura. It's just a flat seam. It's going to be folded over when it's on the bag so you won't see the seam. So that's that piece of 600D Airwave. And then the liner for the pocket goes here. I made this part out of 1680D Ballistic Nylon. I was having a hard time sewing the hook Velcro and making the stitches look nice. So rather than keep messing around with it, I just kind of framed it into this window so I could sew through the 1680 and not through the Velcro and it made it look better. Sewing through the softer side, the, the loop side of the Velcro was no problem, but for some reason I was having a, a difficult time getting clean stitches all the way around and I wanted this to look nice, so that's why this panel is made this way. And the Velcro and this panel are sewn to the liner, not all the way through, so you won't see any stitches on the front. The only thing that's going to be on the front is this Fidlock buckle. So it'll close with Velcro and a buckle to make it a little bit extra secure. Um, and I'll just have some webbing that this buckle is attached to. So for the body of the front pocket, that, that was the front panel and the flap, and then there's the body of the pocket. So I've got the vinyl liner that I've sewn a strip that's about 12 inches wide and then there's like two inch, two and a half inch uh, to provide volume on each side. And then the exterior panel is just one piece that it'll fold down. So you won't have like that, that sharp crease of the pocket on the outside, but you'll still have the volume because it will conform around that vinyl. That's the plan anyway. And uh, I've got the loop Velcro sewn here. And again, so when, when this is intact, that flap will close and this extension collar will be part of that. Because of the way I've designed this, that fold is going to be where this pocket is. So that's going to limit what I can put in this pocket. 
uh, and that's just something I'm going to have to live with. Um, the other option would have been to move the pocket farther down, but then it's harder to reach, and that's a, it's a compromise, but we'll see how it works. So now I think I'm at the point where I can sew all of this stuff together to make the finished front panel of the bag. So, uh, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but through confession time, uh, I am figuring this out as I go. I don't think a lot of people, probably distracting, I don't think a lot of people appreciate the difference between making things like bags, backpacks, that kind of stuff, and say, woodworking. Uh, you could go to a bookstore, if bookstores still exist, or go on Amazon or whatever, and find untold numbers of books on you know, cabinet making or whatever, uh, and find detailed instructions on how to make a particular style of cabinet or table or bench or shelf. If something like that exists for backpacks, I have no idea where it is or how to find it. Uh, if you know, throw up a comment down below. Uh, so, at least for me, when I'm trying to make a backpack and have an idea of how I want it to come out, I just have to figure it out as I go. So, I'm figuring this out as I go. And what I figured out is I need this panel that was made of like three different fabrics just as fillers actually needs to be fabric that can be a, a finished fabric that's visible. Uh, so I'm going to use more of the 1680D ballistic nylon and make that panel now. So if you're thinking that this is not the way this should go, if you're trying to efficiently produce something, you are correct. I'm just going to use the back panel as a template to speed this up so I don't have to do a lot of measuring because it's the same size. So of course after I sewed that back together, uh, I realized that this part of this orange vinyl and this unfinished seam between the vinyl and the printed fabric, when the pocket is assembled, it's hard to show you now, but when the pocket is assembled and bound, so this is the back panel and this is the pocket, uh, this will be visible. So I need to cover this with a finished seam. I'm just going to use more 1680 and basically do the same thing I did here, uh, put a fold over and sew it to cover this. And that way when really just this little section right here is visible, uh, it'll be finished and that's a lot of trouble, but here we are.
I need to attach the strap for the buckle. And I was kind of planning on it being here. Uh, hmm. Okay. I think I'm just going to attach it at the bottom and live with that. I kind of wanted to mount it not at the bottom. I didn't really have a plan about it, uh, but I think just mounting it to the bottom will be fine. Okay, so I've sewn the strap to the top flap. I did this kind of the way I don't like to do it. Um, the stitches are visible on the inside. Uh, the way this flap closes and opens, I don't think it's going to be seen from across the room and people are going to realize how terrible I am, but I would have preferred to have remembered to put that buckle on the outside layer before these two layers were put together. <clears throat> and then I just sewed this strap into the bottom, so when it's all closed up, it'll It'll look something like that. I'll cut this off to wherever I want to leave it eventually. I suppose I could make the claim that, you know, having this loose strap here, I could slide a jacket in there or something, but that's not what I intended. Um, so, anyway, it's a prototype. Hi, I'm interrupting this video from the future. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many times this happens where I do something in real life and don't see an obvious mistake. And then in editing, somehow when I see it on a computer monitor, I see it. Uh, I really should have put the top of this buckle down here. Uh, I didn't want to when I was, when I thought about it while I was making it, and I didn't want to because the Velcro is here and I was planning on attaching the webbing with a big box X because I just do that a lot. But I really could have just done a bar tack down here at the bottom. I think it would be a much cleaner way to do it. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually really quite sad that I didn't do that. So uh, why don't I seam rip this out and move it? Well, this 600D Airwave, when you put holes in it, those holes are there and quite obvious. I always want to be honest with you when I make videos uh, about the extent to which I do not know what I'm doing. Uh, and I share this information in hopes that if you are inspired by something I do and try to do it yourself, that you don't blindly follow me down the path of mistakes. So I believe the better way to do this would be to mount this down here. Uh, I'm not a bag designer, so uh, I'm going to have to live with this because I've got to get this done by the day after tomorrow. So it'll just annoy me every time I use this bag. But. Okay, I slept on it, and I just can't stand having that buckle there. Um, I, I just want to explain that, like, throughout this process, because I'm an idiot and I've waited until the last minute to do this, uh, I often am just, like, looking at something, thinking, is that what I want to do? Yes, and sew it. And unfortunately, sometimes I'm wrong. Uh, I can't say this enough. Like, if you have CAD skills or drawing skills or patience, it would really be smart to work all this stuff out ahead of time. It's probably a, a known thing to most people that do this kind of work that, you know, you want the buckle to be at the bottom of a flap instead of close to the top. I don't know. I just, it looked all right to me until I actually tried to use it and then I realized it was bad. So anyway, so I can't take it anymore. So what I've decided to do, I've, I've seam ripped it off. And again, I'm going to show you, you can see the holes. So leaving that there is not an option for me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a piece of webbing directly over that, try the best I can to get it in the same holes. On the inside you're probably going to be able to see, but I'm just going to have to live with that. And then it's going to leapfrog over where the, the Velcro is in the inside, so don't get stitches on the Velcro. And then it'll attach the buckle at the very bottom. I could say that that would leave a handy handle for ripping open the flap. And that might actually technically be true, but it's certainly not what I intended and I don't think it's necessary. It might turn out to be a handy thing. I don't know, we'll see after I use it. Okay, so I didn't film the process. So a new strap on, put the buckle on the bottom where I think it makes more sense. And actually, that does actually work pretty well as a handle. Again, I, it's not like I had a great idea. It's unfortunately a consequence of my mistake. The stitching on the inside is not as pretty as I would like it to be. 
again, it's not really going to be noticeable. I will see it every single time and remember what a dummy I was. And hopefully next time I'll do better. All right, on with the construction. So I think the next thing I want to do is bind this pocket. I originally wanted this seam to be entrapped in the main seam between the front panel and the side uh, gusset. Uh, and I just could not figure out a way to make that work. So I'm going to bind around this entire... Uh, got to put a buckle on it. <clears throat> I'm going to bind all the way around this whole thing. Uh, and unfortunately, that binding will be visible on the outside. Again, I don't think it'll be that noticeable, but it's not really what I wanted. Uh, anyway, to facilitate that, I think I need to round these corners off. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll probably sew it first and then cut it. Because binding a right angle is really not a great way to do it that I know of. Okay, so I've got the front panel, so, which is the front pocket and the actual front panel itself assembled. And I've added on the plastic buckles to you know, just some to webbing to that front panel. That's going to make the compression straps for the side so I can suck this thing in a little bit tighter when it's not fully loaded. One of many ways I uh, would do this better if I were to do it again is to sew these straps in before putting the front pocket onto the front panel, um, which would have been easier. I could have just kind of left them, you know, sewn them long in here and then the, the pocket would cover it. But I'm forgetting a lot of things because I put myself up against a wall time-wise, and so now I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, and uh, this is not the way to do it. Anyway, uh, so the front panel is assembled, and now the next thing I want to do is put the zipper on uh, this is going to be a clamshell opening bag so when it's unzipped it'll open all the way up uh, so i've got the zipper starting kind of on the bottom going all the way around coming back to the bottom there's a strip of 1680 denier nylon that's going to connect those uh, i realize you probably can't see this very well but anyway the point i wanted to point out in this segment of the video is i get questions from time to time about how to calculate things like how long of a piece of zipper do I need to go around this? Uh, I have no idea how long this piece of zipper is. I haven't measured anything. Uh, all I did was I held the zipper up along the uh, circumference of this to make sure that it was long enough, cut it off a little bit long. You waste some zipper that way. But So what I'm going to do is start at one corner. I'm not even going to try to make the square corner. I'm just going to let it take a natural curve around. I'm gonna, so all the way around, and when I get around to the other side, I'm gonna stop to leave enough slack so I can make this connection with the end of the zipper, cut off this little bit of excess that I'll have, finish sewing it, done. Uh, to me, that's a lot easier than trying to calculate how much of a curve is gonna be involved and stuff. So uh, the way to do the math on this is don't do any math. a little bit of a wrinkle. I don't think it'll really show once this is fully turned out. Where I rounded off the corners here, I'm just going to cut off this excess. It's pretty close for not having measured it. Now to finish off the raw edge of where I joined the zipper to the front panel, I'm going to apply edge binding. A few years ago I made a video with four different methods for finishing the raw edges of uh, where you attach a zipper. And I'll put a card in the corner for that video if you want to check that out. So you can file this under the do as I say, not as I do category. Uh, again, I am kind of figuring out some of the stuff as I go. There's a lot of things about this pack that are different from what I've done in the past. Uh, so I made this gusset, which is the part that goes between the front panel and the back panel that makes the volume of the bag. Um, I made it at six and a half inches, 
with a half inch seam allowance on each side that would yield uh, five and a half inches depth, I think is what I think, is that right? With a half inch seam allowance sewn on each side when I assemble it, that would yield a five and a half inch depth. And when I clipped it on the front panel and looked at it, I just thought, hmm, that doesn't look as deep as maybe I want it to be. I did a quick calculation and with a five and a half inch depth for the size of bag that I have, that would be about 22 liters. If I added an inch of depth, so this is seven and a half inches, which will be six and a half once it's sewn in, that goes from 22 liters to 25 liters. I just think for the, the intended use of this bag, that little bit of extra volume will be helpful and it won't hurt anything. I've got compression straps if I need to compress it down some when it's not as full. Um, so I'm gonna go with a little bit bigger. That means I've cut more fabric out. You know, I'm lucky I have a lot of this fabric so I can just kind of improvise this stuff. Would not recommend working this way unless you have a lot of very cheap fabric. Uh, I will use this for something eventually. I've got scraps all over the place that I end up using in things. But So anyway, just something to think about as you're thinking about the design of your bag that you're going to make or whatever. Uh, you know, might be good to figure this out before you start cutting. But this is what I did. And now before I can sew this into the bag, I need to assemble the gusset by adding the water bottle pockets and the grab handle at the top. And I may do some decorative stuff. We'll see. I'm just making the top grab handle. Uh, this is some three inch webbing. And I've just folded it uh, from both ends into the middle for the part where the handhold will be. And I'm just gonna put a zigzag stitch where those two ends meet just to secure the ends down. I'm gonna use my Sailrite uh, Ultrafeed LSZ1 since it is capable of a zigzag stitch. Okay, this is sort of the point I've been waiting for. I already know there's some mistakes and misalignments and things that uh, I'm gonna wanna address with a second version of this maybe, but this might be the thing that determines whether or not I'm bringing this on my trip in two days. Uh, and that is to see if it in fact opens clamshell correctly. So now at least we can try that. So. Okay. Let's proceed. Okay, so I've got the, uh, let's see, this is the padded panel that's between the main compartment and the laptop compartment. And I've got that clipped in here, and I just used that, I, I did this off camera, but I clipped in the zipper and the gusset for that compartment. I clipped it all around and then made it the right length, just like I've done a couple of other things. Uh, so now this can get, on. So I'm going to sew the zipper and this panel and the compression straps in, or the other side of the compression straps, in all in this one pass. And then I'll bind that seam. And then when this is turned out, the back panel will join to this edge of this gusset. So. Okay, uh, the theme of this video, if you haven't picked up on it, has kind of transformed itself into how not to make a travel bag. Um, so I was very happy uh, at the end of the day yesterday, I, I got to a pretty good stopping point. And then when I was looking at the bag, I realized that I did not get these um, compression straps attached exactly where I wanted them on this end. Uh, this one kind of goes down that way a little bit, and this one kind of goes up. Um, 
and so I can't live with that, and I've got to take it apart. The good news is I sewed the living crap out of this seam. I like went over these several times to make sure they were in there solidly so they wouldn't come out. So now i got to undo all that. So I'm just going to take the binding off. I, I thought about just seam ripping near where the strap is and moving it and then sewing back over it. I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to take longer than just doing it right. Uh, I'm really trying to slow down now. I'm to tell you a quick uh, anecdote while I'm getting ready to do this. Uh, I used to work for a manufacturer of bags and the theme of my employment there was faster, faster, faster. We were pumping out hundreds of bags at a time. We were batches of hundreds of bags. And inevitably, there was a ton of rework, um, which I, I ended up doing a lot of the rework for some reason. But So one day I told the owner of the business in a meeting, I was like, listen, if we would slow down by 50%, we'd be 20% faster. And he passed out, I think, and had to be revived when he heard me suggest slowing down. But he completely missed the meaning, and, and now I, I can sympathize with him because in my mind, you know, I've got a tight deadline. I've got to get this done. I shouldn't be wasting time talking to you right now. So everything in my brain is saying, go faster, go faster, go faster. And this would have been done two days ago if I had slowed down and not made any mistakes that I had to go back and seam rip out and fix. So to the extent that this is helpful to anybody, uh, you, you do better work going slow and you get it done sooner most of the time. Obviously there's an extent, to, like if I did it perfectly and fast, it would be done quicker. Uh, but that perfect part's important. So, all right, let me get to seam ripping. If we were to make this a drinking game where you had to take a drink every time I made a mistake, you would die of alcohol poisoning. Uh, this, this project is really kicking my butt. So my intention was to sew the back panel on uh, in such a way that the seam would be on the inside, uh, do a bound seam, and that would be on the inside. And somehow I thought I could do that inside this laptop pocket and turn this entire bag through the opening for the laptop. There's just, I don't even want to begin to try that today. Uh, my flight leaves at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow. It's noon now, so I don't have any more time for mistakes. My machine's broken over here. I've, this has been a terrible morning. So uh, I'm just gonna sew it on with the seam on the outside, hopefully be able to bind the exterior seam uh, if my machine is working now. Uh, so again, like I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but what I'm hoping that you get from this is A, if you see this bag on Instagram, like, wow, that's amazing. No, this is not going well and it's not turning out the way I wanted it to. And secondly, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance, I think is how the saying goes. Um, you know, if I had thought about this, I would have known to assemble the laptop compartment to the back panel and then assemble that assembly to the main part of the bag. Um, then I could easily turn it out through the main zipper. So. If I ever get around to doing another version of this, if I don't quit sewing after this, uh, I'll hopefully remember that. So, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, uh, sometimes you have to retreat to advance. I'm going to take the laptop thing out of this completely. Uh, I'm not bringing a laptop on the trip I'm going on. Uh, if I use this bag in the future, there's plenty of room to fit a laptop sleeve. I could actually probably fit it in the front compartment, depending on what else I'm carrying up there. And I'm certainly going to have to have another go at, at this style of bag. I'm, I'm not satisfied with how this is turning out. But I know sewing this seam and then binding it and having it appear attractive and, and professional, probably not going to happen. And I'm probably going to end up setting fire to a sewing machine in the process. So I'm just going to seam rip all of the work I've done this morning. I've got four hours of work in, taking it all off, I put the back panel straight onto the back of the bag, no laptop sleeve, and I, I think that's a better solution for now. I need to rethink how I'm going to do this. I don't think the dimensions were going to work out that great. The zipper was going to be really tight with the binding. So taking it off. To 
say this has been the most difficult sewing project of my entire life is uh, not an exaggeration. Okay, I've got the back panel on. I've turned it out, tried it on. It, it works as a backpack. Uh, the casual observer probably wouldn't notice the flaws that are in it. There are definitely flaws. Um, so now I'm going to trim down this seam. Uh, I might throw another line of stitches on it before I bind it. I don't know. The way I'm probably going to end up having to bind this is not the right way to do binding. Uh, but I'm having problems getting the binding to go all the way around and catch both edges. And I've got my binder adjusted as far as it'll go. So I may just have to sew down one side, fold it over, and sew it down the other. Anyway, you don't need to know all this. Uh, progress? It's 3 o'clock p.m. Uh... By the way, the shears I'm using, these are Mundial, I think they're 8 inch shears. I'll put a link below to where you can get them on Amazon. Uh, these things are indispensable for cutting through really thick stuff like this because the pivot point is farther away from the ends of the grips, so you get a lot of leverage. It's still hard, but I don't think I could do this with regular shears. I'm not going to give you a close-up of the bindings. This is one of the worst binding jobs I've done since getting that binding uh, cylinder arm machine that is set up for binding. Uh, this is horrible, but it's on the inside of the bag and very few people are ever going to see it and I'm going to try to do better next time. I do think maybe the vinyl um, might be complicating things a little bit just because it's another thicker, heavier material um, and I probably need a different size binding. But anyway, it's put together, I hope. Uh, if there's something wrong this time, then I'm going to be using my old carry-on and not one that I made uh, on this trip. But let's see how it looks. I've got a spot here where the edge didn't quite catch. And some basting stitching showing through on the bottom. So I'm going to go back in and just sew that. And it's not going to be hidden by the binding, but I can't help it at this point. Just make sure there's nothing else that I can live with that. Okay, I'm just going to touch up couple of little areas. Well, I made it to my extremely early flight and uh, eventually to Denver, Colorado, and the bag didn't fall apart while I was carrying it. The bag worked really well on a walking tour of Denver, and incidentally I got to have lunch with Matt from Red Paw Packs. Check out the link in the description if you want to see some good packs. Alright, so uh, first the things I'm happy about. I love the way it looks. The printed 600D Airwave, it looks great. I love the look. I did get, actually get one, per I was kind of hoping, you know, people would be like, hey, nice bag. I had one flight attendant as I was boarding say, hey, that's a really nice bag. So that was, that was kind of cool and made my day. Uh, I saw a lot of people kind of looking uh, longingly in my direction, but I don't know if it was because of the bag or just me. I get that a lot. That, that's a joke if it's not obvious. Anyway, so I'm very happy with the appearance of the bag from, you know, 15, 20 feet away. If you get up close, there are problems. But anyway, so overall, the, the general appearance of the bag, I like. And I want to make another one just like it, but better. The handle, uh, I intentionally put an over... Sorry about the jingling. I intentionally put an oversized handle on this specifically because I knew it was going to be going into overhead compartments and I wanted to be able to reach up, grab that handle, and yank it out quickly. And that was perfect. It didn't get in the way when I was wearing it. I don't mind the appearance of it. Some people might not like the way this sticks up as much as it does. It could be, you know, maybe a little smaller, but it's fine. And incidentally, I also put a hanging loop in between the shoulder straps. That's usually where I put a handle on like a smaller backpack, uh, just to be able to hang it up in a bathroom stall or, you know, in a hotel room or something, wherever I needed to hang it. So, uh, but the handle worked great. The bottle pockets were perfect. I mentioned earlier that I was able to retrieve a bottle and replace a bottle without taking the pack off. 
Uh, incidentally, I didn't show the construction of the bottle pockets. I've already got a video on how to make these. But just for fun, I used bicycle inner tube instead of elastic in these. Um, not recommending that you go out and do that on a project that's really important to you. Uh, I'd like to use this for a long time before I know uh, if it's going to last and, and how it's going to hold up. But my initial findings are encouraging. It worked really well. It's pretty strong, but it's still easy to get the bottle in and out. So that's pretty cool, but we'll see what happens. I mentioned earlier this pack is super comfortable. I love the way the suspension worked out on this. I actually had already made these straps for an earlier iteration of what was going to be this bag. Uh, so I just reused the straps so they have a different orange on the inside. It's just 400 denier nylon pack cloth. Uh, it's a little bit brighter orange than what's on the inside of the bag. But I love that look because you can't really see it until, you know, for whatever, you know, if I take the pack off or you catch a glance from the right angle, maybe not even when I'm wearing it. Uh, it's kind of like wearing funky socks when you're wearing a business suit. I, I like that idea of wearing, you know, really silly socks or bright colored socks, but you don't really notice them and, unless you happen to get a glimpse. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Straps are super comfortable. Um, I actually got things in the right place. I often put like these D rings on a strap and they end up way up here or something because I don't know how straps work apparently. But these are perfect. I uh, keep a carabiner with a little bit of paracord on it, just kind of routine link. So I have some paracord on me. You never know when you need to tie something down or take a hostage. And I use this carabiner to attach my clear plastic bag for liquids for going through security. When I pack and I leave for the airport, I just clip that on get through security and then I take it off and put it in my bag. So that was handy for that. I used the sternum strap that's been on uh, the black and orange roll top backpack from the roll top tutorial. Uh, this usually lives on that bag. I didn't have time to make a new sternum strap for this. So just reused that one. Uh, and that was really handy. And then the load lifters were great. Like I, it's, there's nothing in the pack right now, but that really helps have the pack ride up high, and uh, I really felt secure carrying everything. Just really good carry. I'm super happy with it. So uh, I've never used load lifters before. I mean, I've got a like hiking backpack that I didn't make that has them, uh, but I've never had like a daily carry or travel bag that used them. I don't think. But I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely incorporate these into more bags. So. So yeah, the carry of it, I couldn't be happier with. And then functionally, the opening of it, clamshell. I haven't made a clamshell bag before and uh, made some educated guesses on how to make it work well. Primarily, I, I knew I didn't want the zipper to end here so that opening it was, was like opening the zipper against itself. I, I moved the zippers all the way to the bottom so that the, the zipper isn't being stressed when it's open like that. So maybe that's obvious to everybody, but I had to think about it and I'm pretty bad about thinking about things ahead of time as you will have seen by now. So uh, I'm very happy with how that worked out. Loading this thing was great. Like this is perfect. At the end of this video, I will uh, show the unpacking of how I had it loaded out for this trip just to give you an idea. Uh, you'll see a bunch of packing cubes in there. Those packing cubes were made for the black and orange roll top pack. Uh, they specifically fit into that bag, so it wasn't a perfect fit for this. I probably could have used packing cubes made to fit this bag and more efficiently carried what I had or been, been able to carry even more stuff. But, but as it was, the loadout was great, carrying it was great, super comfortable, looked cool. I'm pretty happy with a lot of that stuff. Now let's get to the stuff that I'm not happy with. So first, I'm not sure how well it shows on camera, but this piece of vinyl is uh, wrong side out. So there's two sides, two faces to this vinyl, a dull side and a shiny side. And the rest of the bag, the dull side is facing you as you use the bag. And I put the shiny side out on this side. It's pretty subtle. Like I was mad about it when I first noticed it and then in practice, like I have to look to make sure I'm right about it. It's not that noticeable. 
but it's wrong. Like whether whether it's that noticeable or not, I made a mistake. You know, I try to make stuff as if I were making it for a customer, and this would not go out this way. But I needed the bag, so I had to use it this way. So that's one thing that I'm not happy about. Uh, I made the choice to use a water resistant AquaGuard zipper, and I think for the kind of use this bag or this style of bag is likely to see, I think just a flap over a regular zipper would be fine. In fact, I think making a rain cover that I keep in the bag or attached to the bag or something, if I'm that worried about it getting wet, I think a rain cover might be a better option. Because as you can see, getting this zipper going is a bit of a pain. AquaGuard zippers just aren't as smooth as a regular zipper of the same size. So, um, if this were an everyday carry bag, I would definitely not want to do this um, in this particular circumstance because it's just a pain to open it every single time. But it is important to me that my belongings stay dry. It's always possible I could have a long walk across an airport parking lot to get to uh, you know, my car or something and get caught in a rainstorm. So having some water resistance is, is great. Uh, I think I might do it a different way. That's not really something I hated about the bag. It's just uh, an observation I had. The idea of binding is both to protect the raw edge and it should cover the basting stitch or the, the stitch that joined the panels. And as you can hopefully see here, I failed to cover up the stitching. I, the binding is a little bit loose there, it just didn't maintain uh, you know, proper alignment with the binder. And I could go back and seam rip this a little bit and move it over and fix it. But um, you know, it's a lot better if you do it right the first time. And I didn't, I had lots of problems with binding, but this was really just my mistake. Similarly, where the water bottle pockets attached, this stitch should have been caught inside the seam and not visible. I think open on both of them. Yeah. yeah, you can see there. So, you know, again, most people probably wouldn't notice that, but I definitely do, and it's definitely not acceptable. I talked about it in the construction process, but I made a complete mess of this buckle attachment just because I wasn't thinking ahead at all. I'm not a very good pool player either. So, uh, you know, having the strap here, like it would have been so great if this wasn't here and this was all nice and open. And also probably should have had this attached just, just so that I don't have this looseness here. It would have been nice if this were attached to the pocket a little bit higher up, the bottom strap, but uh, it's okay, but definitely not how I wanted it to be. And the, the zipper mesh pocket inside here worked really well. I think I just need to put that on this side. So, um, I mean, it'll still be in the fold. I'm not really sure what the best solution is. I, I like having the pocket for small items, but the fact that it's right where the flap needs to fold is inconvenient. But it also needs to be where it is because otherwise it's way the heck down here and then what's the point? So, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could not have a pocket there. At least with the pocket, I have options for things that are small enough or bendy enough that it doesn't matter that they get folded. Um, but I don't know. There might be a better solution than this. I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. And I guess I should show you. This is that inside of that pocket. So you can see there's quite a bit of space in here. It adds almost another five liters to the bag, if my math is correct. When I say another five liters, I'm counting from about here because it has to fold over to close. Uh, if you filled this bag up and that pocket up, I mean, it might be a bit much for carry-on, honestly. I know I'm talking about stuff I don't like, but I am happy with this pocket. Uh, on the subject of things I'd like to improve, though, I think I'd like to shorten this pocket a little bit so that it doesn't overhang the, you know, it's the same size as the bottom, but in practical use, it ends up kind of being floppy down here. I also sewed it fairly far in from the edge when I attached it to the front panel. I think if I sewed it with just enough excess to be able to bind it afterwards, then that would have a nicer appearance. This, I think, again, most people wouldn't even think about it if they saw it, 
but I just feel like it could be a little bit neater. Uh, again, I wanted this to be incorporated into the seam, and there's probably a way to do it if I made some changes to the shape of it, but uh, that would be pretty complicated anyway. So I think I, I'm happy with it being bound. I just maybe want to tighten things up a little bit, maybe shrink this down just a little, just so that it looks a little more cohesive. Ordinarily on a backpack, I like to do some sort of stitching in the back panel. Uh, I think this serves a purpose, maybe not the one that you're thinking it does. I think a lot of people think putting these channels in will increase airflow and reduce the sweaty back. Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, something that has really elevated sections and big channels might help some, but I think carry a backpack in warm weather, you're going to have a sweaty back. But uh, in any event, I think it does help uh, stiffen things up a little bit. I did not have any time to do anything to this back panel, and I don't really love that. It just doesn't look finished. I also probably, if I were to make this again today, I would probably use a different fabric up here. This part doesn't touch me at all, and it just would look more finished, I think, if it had you know, maybe the 1680 to uh, where this strap connects everything um, rather than this. This just looks like, I don't know, it just doesn't look well thought out to me. But it functioned fine. Everything functioned great, but it uh, just doesn't look that great. And again, all I had to do was put a couple of little loops of 17337 webbing here and here, and I could attach a removable waist strap. I already have one made. Uh, I just used G hooks to attach it, but uh, forgot about it. And I did not put my uh, sort of trademark inner tube bottom on this. Uh, had I had the time to do it, I definitely would. This material is very durable and very water resistant. It's no problem at all, but I, I do like the inner tube bottom thing, so I think I would try to incorporate that uh, on a future version of this bag. One of my biggest problems with how this particular bag turned out in terms of my performance is there's some pretty serious misalignment here. Um, I, I think you can probably see it by eye, but if, if the center line is right here, there's like it's kind of shifted over this way. The way to do this correctly would be to cut notches at the center of each panel, so the center of the back panel, center of the gusset, and then probably at some strategic points um, all the way around the perimeter to help you align everything so that it's perfect. And I did center notches, but I didn't do anything else. And again, I was in a real rush to get this done. Uh, it's not an excuse, but I mean, there's a reason why this happened, but so it's hard to even show it. And you know, some of you are probably, oh, I can't even tell, it's fine. It's not, it's not fine, it's definitely wrong. Uh, but you know, it's minor. Uh, again, if I were making this for, for you, uh, I would not send this out this way. And by the way, I don't, that's not a hint, I don't really make stuff for people for money. Um, I'm not against the idea, but you'd have to pay me a lot of money and have a lot of time to wait uh, for me to make a bag like this for somebody. Um, so and anyway, that's a, another story in itself, but uh, occasionally I get questions about it. It's not really something I do on the regular. Um, anyway, so this, misalignment really bugs me um, a lot. This isn't something that bothers me. I do want to mention it though. I'm just watching a Pack Hacker video the other day and uh, Tom from Pack Hacker was reviewing an everyday carry bag, which is a very different circumstance, and was discussing how the compression straps prevented the zipper from opening and you can you can change that by attaching the compression straps on the other side of the zipper. I've done that both ways. In this circumstance, I actually thought about it and decided to do it this way because I wanted that compression strap to stop it. So if, say, at the airport or you know somewhere I needed to open the bag to get something out of the top, I'm not going to inadvertently open it too far, stuff fall out. It was very tightly packed. I can just open it a little bit, get to the top, and zip it back up. Um, but something to note if you're watching this and thinking about making a bag of your own, that's a decision that you can make. I'm also thinking that at some point I'd like to make a version of this pack where the zipper goes up to the top. 
Um, I'm to figure out how to work the handle in with that. But the um, the idea of being able to open just the top to get like you know a sunglasses case or something out is appealing to me. But anyway, so just I thought about that. This is how I wanted it. During the construction phase of this bag, in some of the video I mentioned that when I turned it out after I bound it, there was some areas that weren't caught and I had to go back and sew them again and that that stitching would not be covered by the binding. And you can see that, I hope, right in there. And then all along here, again, it's very unlikely that anybody would ever see this. If I sold a bag like this, I don't suspect most people would return it and say that they wanted a refund because of that or complain about it at all. Uh, but it's wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. All the stitching should be invisible and covered by the binding. That's one of the purposes of binding it. So definitely something I want to address uh, next time. I think with the thicknesses of these fabrics and as many layers that are in some of these areas, I probably just need to use a bigger binding. This binding is one inch uh, mil spec 4088. It's my favorite binding, but I probably needed something bigger. The, the thicker the seam is, then like, you know, if you have, if you have a very thin seam, then the binding goes, you know, that far, but the thicker it gets, the, the less deep it goes, and the less big of a bite it takes. So I probably just needed wider binding for this. I do wish that I had been able to put the laptop compartment on the bag, uh, even if I'm not going to ultimately use this bag or just use it as a prototype to build a better one. It would have been nice to confirm that what I have in mind for the laptop compartment would work. It's a little different than what I did on the roll top bags. But there was just no way it was going to happen in this particular circumstance. I, I mentioned this in the construction phase, but I don't know if I said it clearly enough. What I should have done was assembled the back panel to the laptop compartment and then put that assembly onto the gusset as the last step of assembly. And then I could very easily open up the clamshell opening and flip the bag around, no problem. I would have sewn it inside out. Uh, but for some reason, I was trying to put the, the bound seam inside the laptop compartment. I really don't know what I was thinking or why I ended up trying to do it that way. I think I just wasn't thinking ahead. So it's a pretty easy problem to solve, but not with like three hours left to go before I needed to be home to pack for my flights. So, so I do regret that I didn't get to have the laptop compartment on there, uh, partly because I'd like to know, you know, how that would have affected the overall size for being a carry-on and packing on a plane and stuff. Um, anyway, uh, say la vie. That's all I can think of. I'm sure there's probably other things that I would improve that I'll realize later. And then I'll make a version 2.0 and there will be problems with that that I didn't expect to have. Or I don't know. Uh, I know some of you are going to tell me that I'm being too hard on myself, that this bag is great. Uh, recently, I failed to complete a 50 mile ultra marathon and I got a lot of flack for saying that I failed. I still maintain that I failed because the goal was to run 50 miles and I did not run 50 miles. I ran 30, well, I, I ran 17 miles and walked 16 miles because of leg cramps, but I covered 33 miles and that's a really long way to go and I had a good experience and I'm proud of the effort that I put into it. This bag is very similar. This bag's a failure. This is not what I set out to build and it's not up to the standard that I intended to build it to. But still a pretty damn good bag. Like, I really liked carrying it. It looks cool. Uh, really comfortable. Worked perfectly. Not a scratch, not a flaw, not a loose stitch, nothing when I got back from using it, you know, on a, on a lengthy, fairly lengthy first trip. Not a lot of people will sew right up to the last minute to finish a bag like this and then throw a bunch of crap in it and hop on an airplane and go halfway across the country. So I'm very proud of what I did here. Uh, however, I hold myself to a pretty high standard when it comes to what I'm capable of sewing at this point. And this is not to the level that I expect of myself. So this is a failure, but it's a step in the right direction. Oh, and I'm going to try to run 50 miles again in December. 
So hopefully I'll finish. Maybe I'll go 43 miles this time or something and get closer and eventually I'll reach my goal. With this bag, I have not reached my goal, but I've gotten a long way towards being able to achieve the goal the next time. So that said, uh, you should try making things like this. Before you ask, no, I don't have a pattern for this thing. If you haven't figured out that there's not a pattern for this at this point in the video, then you skipped a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, if you're interested in a really detailed tutorial or perhaps a PDF pattern of this, I can't promise anything, but if enough people let me know they're interested in it, that'll help me gauge whether or not I go through the phenomenal amount of trouble to make something like that happen. I don't know how many people want to make their own carry-on bag, although you could reduce the depth of this thing and make it a pretty reasonable, you know, everyday carry bag, day pack, whatever you want. So I guess let me know if that's something that's interesting to you and I'll see if it's something that I can make happen. Uh, no promises, but anyway. I hope you found some of this useful. I know this is a really long video. Thank you if you watched all the way through. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. There's affiliate links that you can check out below. Uh, it really helps me out if you purchase through those links. Clicking like is always a big help. I have some merchandise that's on a shelf or a link that you can find below. I know it's pretty dated and if you've already bought it, then you've already bought it. I'm trying to come up with some new merchandise, but if you haven't bought a sticker or a t-shirt or a coffee mug or something like that, that kind of thing always helps. If you're interested in other stuff I do, I have a second channel. There will be a link below to that. You can check that out and you can also follow me on Instagram. And if you're already doing all those things, thank you so much for being part of the channel. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. So here's a quick rundown of my loadout. Uh, I had my reusable coffee mug and my ever-present Nalgene bottle. Those were with me most of the time I carried the bag. Inside the front compartment, uh, when I wasn't on the plane, I just threw everything I could into this. Uh, I had my headphones, I just kept those on me in the plane. My e-reader and book, some extra masks in case we needed masks, a uh, manicure kit, my usual pocket organizer without the multi-tool in it because it's got a knife blade in it so I can't bring that with me. Inside the zipper pocket uh, I had a bunch of band-aids. I got to cut while I was out and uh, was trying to keep it bandaged up as much as possible so there's lots of band-aids in there. Uh, one of the charging cables for one of my devices, uh, charging block, more band-aids, And fortunately, Bobbin showed up to help me film this part. And in the main compartment, I had a water bottle I brought with me for running. Uh, packing cube with my running clothes, another packing cube with some clothing, my loungewear for at the hotel, more packing cubes. Uh, this is my toiletry bag. It's one of the greatest things I ever sewed. I've got a video way back on my channel. It's a terrible video, but a great toiletry bag. And then I have my DIY clear plastic bag for liquids for going through security at the airport. Uh, another packing cube. This is actually the pack I made to test this material for the first time. Uh, package of marshmallows that I brought to snack on. Uh, I had some loose clothing that I didn't have a packing cube for. Uh, this is the biggest packing cube that I made. And then more of the loose clothing. I intended to try to make another packing cube or two for this trip, but obviously didn't have the time. And finally a bag with my running shoes and bottle carrier and stuff for running. And that's everything that I brought with me on the trip. Thanks again for watching.